Okay. Welcome everyone to today's session on digital marketing for product based businesses. Uh, this is the session is presented by idea Mississauga in collaboration with acorn studios marketing. And before we get started, I'm going to read a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the lands which constitute the present day city of Mississauga as being part of the treaty lands and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Seneca and Atawantiran and wider Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Huron Wendat First Nation. We recognize these peoples, the Anishinaabe, the Ojibwe Chippewa nations within the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat and all other peoples who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. As a municipality, the city of Mississauga is actively working towards reconciliation by continuing to strengthen our relationship with Indigenous communities. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all Indigenous peoples. Again, this session today is presented by IDEA Mississauga and a bit more about us. We are your central source for small business information, resources, and guidance. Our resources and services are currently provided remotely and our hours of operation are from Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. We provide free business information and guidance, webinars and workshops, resources and tools, training and mentorship programs, as well as entrepreneurship programs. So a bit more about some of the programs and resources that we offer. We have the business advisory services, which consists of legal services, accounting, business operations, sales strategies, as well as digital marketing strategies uh, and scale up services. Uh, to find out more about any of the programs that we are presenting today, um, feel free to scan the QR code on each slide and it will take you right to the website to learn more. The next program is the My Main Street program. This program supports new and existing small businesses in Mississauga's Clarkson, Cooksville, Malton, Port Credit, Streetsville, and the downtown core area Main Street communities. We help brick and mortar Main Street businesses to attract new and existing consumers. The summer company program is for 15 to 29 year old students and this program consists of business training and mentorship to help you get your business up and running as well as the opportunity to apply for a grant of up to $3,000 to help you launch your summer business. And again, more information on each program can be found through the QR code on each slide. We also have the Starter Company Plus program. So this program consists of free training and business skills development, free mentorship and guidance, as well as the opportunity to apply for a, uh, a program grant of up to $5,000. And the Digital Main Street program. So this program is, uh, uh, you get a free digital assessment of your business. We help to enhance your online business presence. We also provide free one-on-one -on -one guidance, resources, and recommendations on growing your business online digitally. Um, and we help you to apply for the digital transformation grant of $2,500. This grant is currently open. So if you are interested, please scan the QR code to learn more. And the step up program. So this program is a four month program that supports innovative and inclusive companies to grow and overcome barriers. During this program, you attend workshops, you connect with experienced mentors, and at the end, you have the opportunity to pitch your business to potential investors. So a bit more about our team. We are here to help you. So we have John Lam. Are, are people having trouble hearing me? I'm just seeing the chat. Laura and Emily, can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. We can, but maybe everyone, is there everyone on the audience having trouble or just those two people? I'm wondering if anyone can let us know if they can hear. Okay, so someone can. Okay. We should be good. Okay, great. Um, so again, a bit more about our team. We have uh, John Lamb, who is our entrepreneurship and innovation specialist. Um, you have myself, I handle general inquiries and consultations, Susan Loveless and Nicole Barker, who are our small business consultants. And we also have Sahana, who is our digital Main Street project coordinator, and she tackles the digital consultations. And since you attended today's event, we invite you to join our future events as well. Um, to learn more about our upcoming events, please visit ideamississauga.ca forward slash events. And to, uh, to join our e-newsletter, um, we 
uh, we recommend you uh, sign up for our e-newsletter. Feel free to scan this QR code to find out about any upcoming programming, events, workshops, webinars. Uh, we usually inform all of our audience through the newsletter first. And just a few ways to contact us. So we, you have our email, which is idea at mississauga.ca. Our phone number, 905-615-4460. Our website to learn more is www.ideamissisaga.ca and we are also on social media. So we're on Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Idea Mississauga. And during today's session, just a few housekeeping rules. So the audio is available for speakers and panelists only as well as the camera. The session today is being recorded and we recommend you use the chat area to offer any comments and questions that you may have. And please, uh, as a reminder, just uh, put it to all panelists so that everyone is able to see your question. And today's presentation resources and a feedback survey will be emailed to all attendees. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our uh, speakers for today. We have Laura Dunkley and Emily Watson from Acorn Studios Marketing. Thanks, Mona. Just share my screen. Just let me know if you see the presentation slides. Emily, yes, or looks great. The, the proper ones. Excellent. Okay, and Emily. So welcome everyone to Digital Marketing 101, Seven Steps to Getting Started. Today's session has been offered before for very, for general Digital Marketing 101. And today's, we're gonna take those seven steps and focus on you, a product-based business. So as you have met Emily and myself, we are a, a small boutique agency. My background is entrepreneurship. I've been doing this for a very long time and uh, strategy business is my background. Emily is the graphic designer and social media and you have both of us today. I'll be leading the presentation, but Emily will also be available for Q&A when it comes to social media and design. So before we get started, I always like to do this, making sure I have my chat open or Emily, you can also do this um, if you can. My question to you guys is just to warm up our brains. Can you tell me, and you may have seen this before, um, identify who's in the image or what it is? Let me just, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna find a way to get my chat open so I can see you guys doing it. And it's a way for us to get going. Okay, so if you can find your chat, if you're on your phone, that might be hard and that's okay too. But if you can, let us know. And then the second image, what do you think this is? Just let us know, drop us in. If you can't find your chat, we might just move on and that would be okay too. I'll give it two seconds. You're all finding your chat. All right. What you see, let me know. Yeah, man walking into the snow and an hourglass, interesting. Anybody else? Oh, someone else is saying that one is a dog on the left. So it's same picture, two different people, one saying it's a dog and one saying it's a person. I think it is truly a dog, but the first thing I saw as well was a, a person walking into the image, into the woods. The other one, Emily and I had this discussion, and I know this is an age-old image. Is it two faces or is it a vase? I, not one is right and not one is wrong, but it's interesting how from our perception and visually, we see two different things. You'll see where I'm going with this. So now let me know what you see in this image. What are these? Anybody? What do you think this is? Colored pencils. Ah, oh, you guys are good didn't make this hard enough. They are colored pencils. Okay, what about this one? What's the image in the corner there? Not the plants, the other image. Anyone? Emily doesn't get to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> A couch. Yeah, interesting. Anything else? 
a jungle cat, a zebra, zebra decor. I love it. See, right? It could be a zebra. It could be a rug on a couch, like a, a throw rug in a, in a, totally see that now. Interesting how you said that. It is, it is a lion, a tiger. So it's a white tiger. And the whole point of this is, is sometimes when we see a small snapshot of something, we can come at it. We have to start to put those pieces together. So as brands, we want to make sure that we don't confuse any of our audiences. We can't just give them that little snapshot and expect them to figure it out. Give them a little ad and go, how come they're not following through? Or just be on social or all of a sudden have some confusion in giving them one thing and not another thing and it's not consistent branding across the platform. And the whole point of today's session is to bring that all together, but it's a lot, right? I mean, it's much easier to just give them a snapshot and it gets confusing. And I don't know about you guys, but so often, and I do this for a living, it feels sometimes like I don't know what's up and down. I don't know. Are you guys on that thumbs up that you sometimes get a little frustrated with where to go, whether digital marketing, what are some of those challenges you have? And drop it in the chat. I'd love to know, is it is it website that's frustrating? Is it putting it all together that get, makes you confused? Is it just social media? Is it the constant changing? Um, I, I see a lot of people are saying yes, so I'm glad I'm not alone. Um, and today, hopefully, all of it, yep, things move fast. They do. Look at what's the trends this year in social media alone are going to change us and Emily can tap into some of that. Artificial intelligence, where is that going? So how do we know when the steps we take, the choices we make are the right ones for our business and how do we stay in touch and how do we make sure we make enough money to the point where we're not always just on digital marketing, right? We actually have to work our business. Well, today we're going to take a little of that confusion out. So you guys are going to feel like you got it together because there's some simple seven steps that we're going to lay out and they're simple, but they're not easy. So, but having a guide and using these steps are going to help you make sure it's a checklist to make sure you think about them and you know what order they come into to make sure you haven't missed anything to increase your chances of getting actually that return on investment that you want from digital marketing. So let's get started. What are those seven steps? And having done this for a few years now, this is something that does not change. It won't change. Now the, the technique within it, the content for each of you is going to be unique, but if you follow these seven steps, they're going to set you up for success. First is writing a business plan, and I don't mean a huge business plan. We'll talk about the key sections to have, but you need to have that to get started. You need to know who your audience is. You need to have marketing goals. You need to know what you expect from marketing and where you want to go. You have to figure out what channels you want to communicate with your your ideal client as well as potentially other stakeholders. And then you have to have an actionable plan. What are you going to do with all this information to make it happen? And then for sure, content is still king. And how do we create great content? And what might be great for one person might not be for the other person, but there are some best practices. And then number seven is track your performance. You need to know if you're getting where you need to go. Now, just because it's one to seven doesn't mean we do it in this linear fashion. We have to consider this all at once, but still following through. Some come at the beginning and some like tracking your performance needs to be considered up at the front. But seven steps is what you need to follow. So let's start with the business plan. You need to know what you want out of your business, right? Marketing can't support you if you don't know what you want from your business. So set those goals, have a clear vision, know how you want to execute on that vision and make sure you know what value you're offering to your clients, right? Is it um, where you position yourself in the market and, and make sure you're very clear on that. Know where your competition is and why they're going to choose you over the other um, competition. Um, and also figure out how you're going to be selling this as product-based customers, right? Are you going to be doing e-commerce online over only? Are you selling B2B business to business? Are you retail? Are you doing a combination of both? Set 
that up right at the beginning. Figure out what you're selling, then figure out how you're going to sell it, which is part of that business model, and then go through your financials. It's always not the fun thing to do for us marketing people. However, it's essential to know what kind of budget you need for marketing as well as how you're going to promote it. So those are just some of them. Um, business planning is a whole other expertise. If you have questions about a business plan and you want more help, the Idea Mississauga team is also there for support. Business Model Canvas, if you want a one-pager, this is something that you can do, and it just is that get it down and get it done. You don't need to take 18 months to write a business plan like I did with my first one. You should be able to put the key things down and then actually get started. And then always remember to map out your customer journey. This was kind of plugged in. Does this go in marketing section? Does it go in the business section? This is where these sections start to become fluid and think about it. But first thoughts, how do you want your customers to come to you? What are those channels? How do you want to reach out to them? If they're an online shopper, what are those things, those payment um, portals you have to do? So the payment aspect, even though marketing is going to support that, that actually sits into your business section. So figure out how you're going to take payments. How are they going to get confirmed? They're going to go, is there a pre-order? Is there a shipping order? Just map it out, whether it's on paper, on a digital online um, program like Miro, it's an online collaborative form, whatever that is, um, definitely map it out. And then this is Miro, as I'd mentioned, we, Emily and I use this all the time and quite often in some of our um, workshops. Miro.com does have a free version, so have a look if that's something that interests you. But what this one particularly is, it's a brand strategy template. It's free to use, but what I like about this, it gives you those ideas. And some of those things that you need to think about when you're thinking about your whole brand strategy is your purpose, your vision, your values. All of this comes together and it's going to be very important when you start to do your digital marketing. And target audience is a key thing and we're going to talk about that as well. And when it comes to your brand tone and voice, when it comes to telling your story, this is going to be important as well. So map all of your strategy out and then tell that story. People like a story because that's how they remember. It's a bookend. That's how our brains work. It increases the opportunity to be more memorable and it helps you when you write down your story to understand who you are. People want to connect with you and they'll more likely do that when you know how to tell your story. Through the Idea Mississauga and you can access this on our webinars as well, we did go through brand storytelling. So if you want more information about that, um, there's some resources available. Now you have your story, you have your vision, all of that has to happen. Next is your brand. You actually have to create a visual um, story to be able to tell, to be able to share across your website and all your other, th other channels. And what we do is brand, um, a brand strategy turns into this. It's a visual style guide and assets. These Emily did questions at the end. Emily will be happy to help you with this. But what this is, is the creation of a logo she did, um, and you should be able to do this as well, or hire someone to do this. You want a custom color palette as well as fonts, the logo details, how you want to use the logo, and even things like patterns. And all of this is put together in a nice guide, and it helps having that on hand before you even work with anyone or do it yourself is now it's consistent. So when we take that logo, it's shared on all those social media, on your website, we know the tone, we know the voice, we know the style, and that's who you are and you're going to be represented across your online brand. And for example, the consistency, and this is Emily's, but you'll see the whole point of this is that it has to be visual across everything. So from the website to even your online other stores. So potentially you might be sharing your, or selling your product on Etsy, or maybe it's on Amazon, or maybe it's in a retailer. Whatever it is, all those, that brand story, the brand visuals has to be consistent across the board. And that way, when doesn't matter who is joining any from any um, portal, whether it's social media or they're coming in from your email marketing, they're going to instantly be able to recognize who you are and then how to do business with you. So this is part of your brand strategy. So we have a brand. 
We know what we want to do from a business perspective, and now we need to understand our audience. One of the most important things that you need to do and always be doing and updating is understanding your audience because the economy changes, people's habits change, technology changes. All of these things affect how your audience um, works with you and even does different habits of buying and, and searching for media. So. Understanding your target audience is really important. And why? Because 91% of consumers say they are more likely to shop with brands that provide offers and recommendations that are relevant to them. And how do we provide things that are relevant to them? Is because we know what's important for them. And they're more likely, 80% of consumers are more likely to make a purchase from a brand that provides personalized experiences. And how do we personalize that? By getting to know our audience. So what do we do? How do we do this? Most importantly for today, there's a lot of stakeholders, but your ideal client is one of the most important um, target audience segments that you need to consider. So there's a primary and a secondary, and you wanna go through all the basics, right? Age, maybe gender if it's important to you, where do they live, children, entertainment. Write it all down, please write it all down. Put it into a form like this, or wherever that might be, but definitely write it down and access it regularly. One of the most important things is your values, interests, hobbies, lifestyles. This gets into their emotional. You want to be empathetic towards them. It's like what motivates them to buy, right? Why would they even um, purchase from you? Are they price sensitive or are they not price sensitive? Do they like luxury? Do they like to travel? Is uh, family more important to them than travel? If it is, then you need to understand what that is and what really does motivate them. And how do they consume information? Do they like to watch videos? Most people like videos. But there are some people that prefer to read text. Is it an older generation? Do they prefer newspapers? Well, you're not going to do an ad out on TikTok if you are focusing on a, an older um, demographic. So these are things that we really do hope you will write down to, to create then this ideal persona. And this is your avatar. You've heard us talk about this before. Avatars is just a fake person. And so that ideal client, write it all down, create that messaging, goals, how you can specifically help and solve their problem and, and write it down on this and keep it up on the wall somewhere, some, somewhere obvious that you can reference on a regular basis. Where do we get the information? Primary research is things like focus group surveys, interviews, ask your ideal client, like, what do you think about this product? Does it make sense with you? Um, and then get all that information. The most rich information comes from that primary, but it also takes time. So there are other, other ways to get information. That's secondary research. That can come from sales data. It can come from things like forums. How are, what are the questions they're asking? Um, social media, hashtags, what are the things, what are the problems that people are having that you potentially can solve? All of those are great resources for finding out more information about your audience. So setting goals, number three, where do we want to take all this information and what do you want marketing to do? So the first thing for setting up marketing goals is to ask these questions. What business goals are you supporting? If you are trying, if you're just building a brand from scratch, you're just getting started, brand awareness is really an important business goal, right? You just have to get out there. So that's where marketing can help with that. What if you're, you've been out there for a while and people just aren't converting? It's like, we have to, in, we have to increase revenue. Well, increasing revenue is a business goal. Marketing can do that by helping develop potentially content. And we're going to focus things through the funnel to help you convert, to see how it all has to work together, because this is what marketing's role is. And what does success look like to you? What are those key metrics? When does it, things like this have to happen? How are you going to elevate success and who particularly are you actually trying to reach out to? So if you're expanding your business maybe into another province and business and your business goal is I want to expand into Alberta and you go, okay, well, what can marketing do to help? Well, we can now build awareness around that province. And so our focused audience is not going to be 
um, BC, it's going to be Alberta. So we really have to understand that audience and write it all down because this helps you be accountable, but helps you stay focused. And it helps you understand if you're marketing successful. If you do not have goals, you will not know if you're successful. So please do write it down and make sure they're smart. And this is where if we answer these questions, they're going to be sp smart. They're specific, they're measurable, achievable. Well, Sometimes we have to put it down and create benchmarks to part of its research to know if it's achievable and adjust as needed, but try and be realistic, relevant, and timely. And what do those key indicators look like? It is that awareness, consideration, decision, and loyalty. So these, this is what we call the funnel, right? So always be thinking the funnel, whether it's marketing goals or, um, marketing goals or creating content, whatever that is, everything has to move through the funnel. So the general awareness has to happen before we can actually buy. And this is fundamental to your success across all your marketing. And the fact that if you try and do an ad when you're straight to the decision and you haven't even built awareness or built a community, it's going to be very difficult to get them to conversion. So everything we talk about today and in your future of your digital marketing plan thinks through this funnel concept. So from awareness standpoint, we have to maybe get more traffic website views, right? Generally speaking, we want more followers on social and maybe we want more email subscribers. So that's just general awareness to say people know about us. Consideration are things like, mm, are you right for me? Your customers need to know um, um, if your product is relevant to them, if they're at the right point in, if you're selling B2B, are they right? Is the timing right for them in their sales cycle, in their purchasing cycle? Things like that can help, marketing can help in the fact of understanding if we're getting there is how many media stories that would be if you do a PR campaign. So what's the percentage of engagement? That means people are interested and they want to hear more, right? Demo, did they attend your product demo? Um, emails, what about engagement? Maybe they're getting your emails, but are they actually clicking through? Is there an interest there? And then that decision piece is their sales is it converting right and the returning loyalty is testimonials that's how I'm going to know if if it's working people are talking about it user generated content um, Emily um, is an expert in that world and that is people are picking it up they're sharing how great they love it and that's really ultimately what we want them to do is return and to share their insights so this is how we know that our marketing goals are actually working so selecting the right channels, this is the big one. So most people say, so should I have a Facebook page? Should I have an Instagram page? And this is this next section is you're going to answer this for yourself. Now, experts and, and people in digital marketing might be able to help you guide, guide it through. But this is things that you always need to think about for yourself and for your business. And I hope it's going to help. First thing is understanding what is a channel, right? So there's three main parts of a chan um, different types of channel. There's owned, paid, and earned. Owned is the most important thing that you should focus on ever, always. And what that means is those are the things that you have control of, of for your brand, your website, your social media profiles, um, things that your email marketing campaigns, all of those things, you have direct content in what you contact and control over what you produce and share to your audiences. So that's the own first. Um, and we really want to build that out first. Paid, you got to pay to play, as they say, and that always supplements your owned. Paid does not come before owned because as we use the analogy quite often, you don't invite someone over for a house party when you still don't have walls up on your bathroom. Like you have to build out your home first. You make it great. It's wonderful. You maybe invent, invite a few friends over and go, what do you think? Is this good? Are you comfortable? It's like, okay, now it's time for a house party. And we invite the whole neighborhood because we've had a chance to do that. You get one chance and it's costly when you put on a party. So make sure you get that owned stuff in order and then you supplement and you encourage people to come over earned is that sweet spot. You can't buy it, not really, but you can act, you have to earn it. And those are things like testimonials, 
um, things that people user generated content that's not paid for that people go I just love your product and can't wait to tell the world or media pickup you know there's a story out there you are doing newsworthy things and people want to pick it up and that is powerful because people will trust that more than anything else so you got to do some work to get there that doesn't happen over time but it's also something the ultimate thing that we want to achieve so remember those when we're deciding on what type of channels to do and the critical checklist this is the one that write down um, have this handy when you ask that question should I have a Facebook page so first ask always ask is your audience there if they're there whether you like it or not you really should be there now that's one of the little check marks it doesn't mean it's the only check mark the other things you have to think about is the trends is that platform moving forward are they developing it? Does it look year over year that people are really doing this? Like we know some social media platforms that came and went, right? That they were very trendy and then they disappeared over time. Things like Facebook, every year I go back and go, what's the trend? Why are we doing this? Are they continuing to evolve? And consistently, one of the biggest platforms for a lot of different audiences. So check out those trends, but also trends in your industry. Right. Is this where other people in your industry are doing things? Is this if you're selling clothing? Like, is this the uptake if you're selling to an older generation and maybe they're there, but they're not really buying? They're not engaged. Where are those trends for your product in your industry? And then budget and resources. This doesn't just mean money. This means your money. How what what are the skills you have and how much time do you have? So, for instance, you may have a lot of you may have a lot of skill not a lot of budget it's like i know instagram i can totally do that myself i'm going to go on that because it's a lower barrier to entry i don't have to learn it and i can do it plus the audiences are there and it's a trending platform so i've just checked off a whole bunch of boxes TikTok, on the other hand, oh, it's trending. Yeah, my audience is there. I don't have a lot of money, but I have to learn TikTok. And TikTok requires me to create a lot of content. Really have to think about that. Will I get the return on investment? Do I want to dabble in it? So those are the things that you want to think about. Regulations could be regulations that you just have to think about if you do email marketing, the Canadian anti-spam le legislation. If I get that right, Castle, is something you have to think about. There are regula regula regulations in even advertising. So make sure you have eyes on what you have to do when it comes to using that channel. Regulations, if you're a health professional, that's another thing too. So maybe your governing body has regulations. So please keep eyes on what that looks like because it may be too difficult or you might not even be able to do it. So definitely check that out when you're considering a channel. And then finally, the effort to impact. One of the most easiest things if you're if you're considering a channel, how much effort do I have to put in to get the return on investment? So I always tell people, as Emily knows too, my channel of preference is LinkedIn. Right? She's the expert when it comes to TikTok and Instagram. Mine is definitely LinkedIn. And why do I often recommend everyone has it? Doesn't matter what you have whether you're a B2B, B2C, whether you are selling services or product, just create a LinkedIn company page. And why? Because it's there, it's searchable, doesn't take a long time to do it, it's free, and you don't actually have to spend a lot of time creating content to keep up a reputation within that platform as far as a brand's concerned. So effort to impact, do it. Like this is sometimes a no-brainer, but those are the things you have to consider um, for your business. Um, we can only make those recommendations. So that's the critical checklist for selecting your channels. Now, how do we put these all together? This is the mix. This is this one pager that you might want to um, do, and I'm going to show you an example of a company, a product-based company, and pulling from their public domain. It's obvious because it's all through their website, but a potential communications mix that they're using. So the website you see before you is the hub of everything. It is, doesn't matter again what business you're in, but your website is crucial. It's owned, and it also is only one address that everyone has to remember. 
right? Like, like we have to make it easy for people to find you. It's searchable and everyone just knows if I go here, I'm going to find out all their channels. So your website is one of the most important things that you can do and it needs to sit in the hub of all of your marketing. And I mean all your marketing in person and online. So there's your, there's your website and we will talk about more details on that. But what else do we have as far as the mix goes? Blog. It's content, but it's also a way to reach out through different channels is blogging. So that's one of their tactic that they use and it sits in on the website. So it kind of is website slash its own channel. Video hosting, YouTube, it is a channel that they leverage to put onto their website, but it's also YouTube is one of the biggest search engines out there. So it's like, ooh, I need it anyways, and it's searchable so people can find it from me. It's like, yep, yeah, going to add it to the mix. But adding it to the mix also, and this is how it all starts to work, they do a podcast, a kitchen mix podcast that's totally relevant to their business. They do it as content, but it's also searchable through po uh, various podcast channels, which is also put onto their YouTube and then linked from their website. See how it all starts to work together. So if you're going to create one channel, how is it going to touch all those people? How are they going to bring people to them? How much content do I have to create? All of these have to be considerations. Email marketing, for sure. One of the best ways to distribute, right, is through email. Um, it goes right to your inbox. Once people give you your their email, it's like you have their email. You own it until they tell you to delete it. And we'll talk about email as well, but it is a channel. Media and PR. They have a newsroom on their website, so it's easy for PR to pick it up. It's also a strategy, but it is a channel through their online newsroom. And then directories. Um, we're going to talk about the different directories, and that's basically where other people can find you in other avenues and find out all your information, which ultimately should be directing you back to the website. Then your various social media. Notice that Instagram is a really big icon, do this for yourself as well. Make sure you have at least one primary, I should say, at the most should be one primary and maybe two or three other ones. There is to, you know, it's debatable on what that is, but just remember, do fewer things and do it well. So if Instagram is your primary, put it there. Facebook, yeah, well, Facebook is related to Instagram and it all kind of works together. There's a reason most people have both. LinkedIn, yep, there's a B2B component to what they do, so it makes sense. Pinterest's kind of sitting there, underutilized, but it's it's there. Influencers, another channel. How do we go out there and get brand ambassadors, influencers, content creators starting to talk about your business? And then there's also in person. So many of you, if you have products, you're probably out there demoing them or showcasing them or potentially if you take out events, is it in a retailer? Are they in a retailer channel and they do promotion through um, certain sales events that they do something to consider? And then paid media. It's always at the end and always considered as a supplement. So that's a general mix and a segue into most of the channels that we're going to talk about. So your website, getting started, not going to go through this list. Know you have this for afterwards. There is a checklist at the bottom, which is quite comprehensive. But we'll say if you're just getting started, make sure you go and register your domain name. And then, and that's really important because if you go and register your name and you don't have a domain, it's like, oh dear, someone else has this. So it's one of those chicken and the eggs, right? Make sure you have your domain, register it, make sure you have your proper name and it all works together. So you do need a domain name. Um, you have to figure out what platform you're going to be on. You've established your brand already. Make sure you have your assets and your content. Then you have to design your website, right? Marketing pages. We've got the shop product pages. We've got things like the customer journey we have to think about and then you starting have to create that content that's all part of the design process then you have to set up your payments consider SEO which is kind of always through everything um, track your performance and make sure it's tested before you actually launch your website and if you do have a website already go through this list again to do an audit so it, uh, things constantly are changing so what are the different platforms? We have things like Squarespace is an example of kind of that all-in-one, right? 
you have the all-in-one website where you just it's all kind of contained it's quite secure it's easy to use it's relatively scalable but really it's not meant to go you know all over the world have multiple business units in things like that might be better on a different platform but they have come a long way we just spend a lot of time emily's a squarespace expert and it has come and it's evolved and that's part of the trends to consider is the platform consistently updating so they allow you to sell merchandise as well as different product listings categories and also member portals of which we've just launched a membership as well so inventory management and that's something else that they do now the other one to consider is shopify very popular or there's other commerce first ones like square i think is another one but basically these guys are really robust when it comes to selling product if you're going to be doing drop shipping um, or you are just doing sales of a, of a product and you're not doing a ton of blogging content management things like that shopify might be right for you definitely go and investigate it just always look at the scalability can it scale with you and the costs a lot of times when you go in you go oh it's not that expensive but then you have to start adding things what we love about squarespace is the fact that it's kind of like all in one there's a few little add-ons but it's not really a lot shopify is meant for you to be able to customize it and add it in but just remember those often have a price ticket related to it and then we get into wordpress which is very customizable very scalable but you have to spend a lot of time building out the design and managing all the plugins because it's open source you can do something like woocommerce which is allows you to sell your product so that just note that wordpress does require a lot more attention okay we're going to move through these just for the sake of time 70% um, of online shoppers say page loading speed affects their purchase decision. It doesn't stop. None of this stops at just the design. And all of these things that we're going to talk about right now, these, these statistics, you have to think about as you're designing it. Don't design it and go, oh, page speed. I should think about that afterwards. It should be, all be built into your design process. Now you can go back in afterwards and do some fixes, but that's another thing. The most important takeaway from this is that it is important. Your, how you structure your website will make a difference in how your page load speed happens, how the interaction happens, and we know that online shoppers want that good experience. So do keep that in mind. Um, and there are 88% of users are less likely to go back if they have a bad experience. So do it from the get go. Make sure that it's all optimized from a user experience as well as um, search engine results. And 111% increase in traffic results when you update an old blog. It's one little thing, but design images and content. The takeaway from that is make sure you're constantly updating your content on your website. Google likes it and so do your users. And most people now are accessing things through their mobile phone and that's increasing. So when you do website your design, make sure you check for all the different devices that it's optimized for that. And that gets into when you hear about website design UX, which is user experience and accessibility. Think about this, right? These are some quick tips on what you can do right now. Go back to your website, take this, have a look, or if you're designing your website, make sure you have this. Top of the fold, as soon as you land on it, that top hero image and that call to action is very important real estate. Make sure that they know what you offer and who you provide your services to and a quick call to action to send them where you want them to go so that's top of the fold and content um, google wants you to think of the user first as well as your users so make sure your content is for your user it's updated regularly the navigation is easy as we mentioned mobile and desktop the structure is clear and a quick tip alt text if you are putting up an image make sure that that image has text in behind it and that it's colorful and there's great contrast so now your product pages you guys are product people so make sure your product pages are optimized here's a quick list of things to do your product photography 
all the information that they need to purchase from you, shipping information, you name it, as well as customer reviews. So that is sort of helps convince them, yeah, that's that's what I want to buy. And then if there's any related add-on sales, make sure all that information is on your page. And then that big SEO word, right? Like what on earth is SEO? Is it relevant to me? And how do I unpack search engine optimization? Well, there's things called signals and those are all the things that come back to your website. Um, local signals, backlinks that are coming back, all of those things tells Google that you have some great content and this is what you're talking about. Keywords, things like that. Online reviews are really important. Things that you're consistent about. All of those things that backlinks and then when they get to him when the Google robots crawl through they're going to actually see those keywords and they're going to make sense the structure is all there so there's all the headings make sense so your signals are coming in they get here they know what you're talking about and the structure works for them right the, it's built so that the page load speeds all of those helps with your search engine results and your user experience and a way to test some of this and how and why this makes important sense is search engine results page, your SERP. If you go and search on something, your keywords for your company, what's showing up? Make sure that you show up, that your Google business listing is there, that all the other points are there, different things is your media, is media coming over to you? Is your social media channels coming over from you? You want to have as many touch points on that search results page as possible. And the reason for that too is a lot of people are just finding it and calling or doing it, not actually clicking through to your website. So make sure you think about, about that. And then those directories, Google Business Listing is crucial. Make sure it's optimized. Think about all those other um, channels, all those other directories that are just obvious to most people. If you have um, a, a location, definitely there's more opportunities, but there's also industry um, directories. Make sure you go out there and make sure when you do update these directories that your citations, what is your name, your address are all exactly the same. It's really important you do that. So Forefathers Food Co, they don't want to just do Forefathers on some of the other directors. They want to make sure it stays consistent. So that name is really important. If you have multiple addresses, make sure you have one, unless it's strategic and there are other locations, which is another story. So just make sure everything's consistent across the board. And then consider other directories like Ontario Made. If you guys are in Ontario and you are a manufacturer or a crafter, um, theirs is free. It's, it's not expensive and supportontariomade.ca is one place where you can add your listing. Just one example. And now social media. Okay, we're going to run through social media. It's a big one. We're not going to go into each individual channel too much, but it is the big picture of social media. And that when it comes to you guys and your products, social commerce is is here to stay. 48% of social media users buy something via a social media platform already. I have no doubt this is going to increase, so make sure that you have considered social, your social channel channels for selling your product. Communities and creators are inspiring consumers. This is a trend, right? There's more influencers out there doing things. People want to shop from brands that align with their values. So make sure that your brand on social um, is aligning with your audience. And that goes back to your audience, right? There is opportunities even out there on your social that you would have never thought about before. Um, and that could be doing live demos, right? Hey, doing a little sh mini shopping channel of your own. And then consumers want to have an omni-channel frictionless experience, really important. Now that people are more and more using mobile for researching their products and purchasing, when they go to a store, you have to make sure that if they're there, they may be on their phone as well. So that the brand on the retail store shelf looks the same, all the information is there, know that they want to check you out, maybe online, and they go, mm, maybe I'm going to Maybe I'm going to buy this later, add to my favorites list, like Ikea, you know, the little hearts, um, Wayfair, all of those other. You can actually save things, little playbooks, really important. All of those things are different channels that you have to consider and because your audience wants this frictionless experience. And know that social media is so much more than 
marketing, right? It's your sales channel, which we're talking about, as well as customer service. And as an example, here is their Instagram. Create a strategy for each of your channels as well as your social media. It's kind of a nested strategy, right? That the branding is consistent. What content are you creating? Use a variety of content. Use what's trending. Knows, know what's trending. Make sure you track your results. And when you're creating content, make sure it's authentic and personable. Same with Facebook. So these guys, you see how it's instant? You can recognize their branding across the two, mostly on Instagram, but they have a Facebook presence. All their images are very consistent. They have all of their information filled out and you can see their products, right? Their shop is open in there and it gets redirected to their website. So that brand ambassador influencer piece, just a quick mention, leverage it. It's an opportunity out there so much more on that world but it is um, something that you might want to think about and then linkedin my favorite but only because it's familiar to me do you see what happens we even as digital marketing people we get our favorites but you have to watch this if make sure it's right for your business and how much time you're spending on it has to be right proportion for your business and this is all part of that strategy so linkedin for example these guys, um, forefathers, they sell mostly to the end consumer. That's who they're, they're focusing on, but they do sell to business to business. So there is some portion of the time that they spend on there, but a lot goes into Instagram. They have so much content. So remember, we think about just the percentages, and this needs to be part of your social media strategy. So for LinkedIn, if you have a professional profile, optimize it create it if you don't have one, create that company page, publish that great content, build your network and engage with your network. If you're B2B, this should be your primary with your other one secondary, but not necessarily. Do your research. If you want more information about LinkedIn for Entrepreneurs, follow that QR code. Um, I did do a quick session for Grow. It's part of our member group. We do these small sessions, free to anyone to join our live, but this is a quick peek into what you can do for your LinkedIn. And then they now have product pages. Just a FYI on that. Now paid, this is the big question, right? How do you get the best return on investment for your paid media? Since it's a supplement, we're gonna spend less time on this, but it's a really important one because that's a key question. And you do not want, as Mickey is going here, throwing every single door, if you go on the paid ad and it goes over to your website, you do not want them to have to go through multiple doors to get where they want to go because they're going to be bored and they're going to be frustrated and they're going to leave. So that's one of the key things that you have to remember when you're doing an ad. So first, owned platforms, you have to optimize that first before you invite them over. Make sure that ad is relevant to whatever platform and the people you're sending it to and the content is there. There. Make sure you're memorable. Make sure it's obvious what you're selling. And then that clear call to action. If you are selling a brand new, um, I don't know, a computer, for instance, if you're selling this to your, your um, local businesses, maybe you do computer um, like computer parts and it has to go out there. It has to be obvious that those computer parts are for a business and not for the 15 year old down the road. Um, one example of that was um, a, a brand that I had worked with, they sold furniture and they sold used furniture, but it was B2B. And what was happening is the used furniture, they were getting all these um, customers coming to them that just the individual person, because it wasn't obvious that this was for a business to business. So make sure it's very obvious. And then that clear call to action goes right over to where you want, what you want them to do. And remember to start small, learn, and then adjust. Some examples of what that is, use really good visuals that make sense. The My Dog loves this stuff. I'm just going to pull out some cool things on some of these. It's social proof, right? There is a person saying, my dog loves it. Well, if your dog loves it, my dog must love it, right? Just that the way our psyche works. And then they have the built-in um, information at the top. Know that people are going to look at the visual first. And the only dog food like it. Really 
clear at the bottom there and then what's that call to action shop now so we've proven that people like this it's a really in, it has drawn me into that visual and that's the only dog food like it you can't not buy this so buy it so see how it's quickly gone through the funnel the athos see imbalances that your personal trainer can't it's also already filling in the gap it's figuring out what these people want and going right for it giving those quick visual of who it is and then it's like learn more and then even Slack, um, it's a product, it's a digital product, it's which is still a product. So what it feels like to sit in 25% fewer meetings, they figured out what the problem is and they just went right to it. It's like, yep, we want to be in fewer meetings, so make it better, learn more. To see how we went all the way through the funnel very quickly. And that is media ad, cons um, paid media um, success, very, very um, succinctly put. So media and PR isn't just for the big companies. It's for, for entrepreneurs as well. PR Karma is one platform that is focused on entrepreneurs providing newsrooms that are affordable. But it's also just an opportunity to let you know that the PR world has switched a little bit. What is considered newsworthy for the big guys, now there's things even for um entrepreneurs like yourself. Maybe you're launching a new product. Maybe you're hosting an event. Maybe you are launching into a new pro, uh, new province. Maybe you are, you've hired somebody or you did a total rebrand. All of these are newsworthy. So do remember that that is there and you need to share that story. Uh, if you want to see an example on the Forefathers um, website, they do have a newsroom. And email marketing, best practices, just make sure you have consent, personalize the messages, set up that welcome sequence. That welcome sequence is when they subscribe, you want to double opt in, just make sure you set that up when you do it. That goes, yep, I want to stay subscribed, I'm the right person, this email is real, you click that. You can't always do this, um, paid MailChimp lets you do this, but it lets you automate this sequence. Whereas when they go, yep, that's it, it goes back. And then you have this email already and you send this welcome email. It goes, hey, thanks for coming, joining us. And you talk a little bit about your brand and that's welcome. Now you can have multiple email sequences, but that's the one that we say for sure, set that up. And then consider that whole customer journey when it comes to multiple sequences. Give them a reason to join, highlighted, bolded, it's like gold to give out your email address. There has to be a reason. You have to give them something to get that address. And that is making, and also making it easy to join, right? Like make sure it's everywhere. Make sure it's on your email signature. It's on your website. It's, it's there's a pop-up, but not a crazy pop-up. Like all of those places, think about it, make it easy for them to join. Contests, discounts, giveaways, all of those things are other things you can do. And here's just some cool things that you can do um, to showcase some things uh, and how you want to display it, right? You're never too cool to learn something new. See, sometimes it's not sell, sell, salesy. I could say this. Salesy, you really just want them to maybe sign up for your blog and then you sell them something. Maybe for sure it's that 20% off. I caution you with the 20% off, and so many people do this. The problem with it is if you're not quite ready to buy, you've given them 20% off, and you haven't convinced them yet that, you, that they are your customer. So I'm going to click out of that, and if that pop-up doesn't show again, I'm not going to know where that is. So remember the timing. Remember that funnel. Really important when it comes to setting up your sequence. For instance, this was just an example of our newsletter. One of the things that we definitely do at the bottom is add or join our e-newsletter. And we have a landing page for your e-newsletter. I highly recommend doing that because of the other channels. If you just have a pop-up or somewhere on your website, you can't promote that newsletter elsewhere. So if I wanted to do an ad saying, hey, sign up for our newsletter, where do you send it? Do you just send it to the website? No, because then they, they could get lost. Remember all those doors? So we want to send them directly to the landing page. Not only is it easier, but it's easier for me to track the results from that campaign. So we do, can, um, do suggest creating a landing page and then just embedding your form into it. And then writing your marketing plan. I know we're getting into 
lots of time here. These are just some key things to remember. One of the most important things is that timeline, right? Is um, figuring out what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Tactics, what the tactics is, are things like um, campaigns, right? Maybe you're going to do sales promotionals. Maybe you're going to do some media outreach. All of those things, email marketing, blogging, all of those things are tactics within your digital marketing plan. And this is an example. Use follow the link below to um, the boot camp from the, what we did um, through Idea Mississauga when it was MBEC. There is a digital marketing planning boot camp series to understand this a little bit more. But you can also download the sample so you can see what tactics are done, what timeline within the year, and even a budget. And this is that content. So basically high level, if you don't want to go into all those details, just figure out before you do anything, what you want to achieve, who you're going to be talking to or, or promoting to, what creatives you need to create your content, um, how you're going to actually do it. Are you going to do it yourself? Or are you going to hire somebody? Where is it going to be distributed? Do you have to put paid media behind it? And then make sure you manage, measure, and adjust it. And how do we do that? Through something called an editorial calendar, which you can do using a spreadsheet, or you can use an online one like Asana, which is what Emily and I um, and many of our clients actually use. And then creating great content. And what did we talk about? It's the funnel. So when you're ready to create content to share out on all your channels, ask these questions. You'll have this afterwards, but think of these questions when you're when you're trying to create content. So if we really want to build awareness as part of our goal, we want to increase traffic, make sure that you are creating content that answers these questions. Consideration, answer these questions. And this is what you have to think about always when you're going to create content. And photography, important content. Here's some takeaways. Um, you will have this afterwards as well, so you won't have to worry about um, taking a, a picture of this, but there's some cool photography tips. Photography and how you take it is one of the most important things you can do as a product-based company because that instills emotion. Make sure it's clear that what you're selling and that it has context. Lifestyle photography is also important. So you've got your product for your product page, but how is it being used? And then make sure it's consistent with your brand. Blogging is another piece of content. It helps to build up that top of the funnel information, making sure that you create a landing page for it to go to. Maybe you want leads. Um, video, really important to make sure there's video. Here's some tips. Make sure you plan it out, edit, publish, promote, get help if you need it. If you can't create all this content, make sure that you go out and, um, and outsource to get support because you can't grow your company without help. Now, while you're small, it's great to learn all of this, but I do encourage you to find the right team and to build your team as you need, as you grow. Um, video is one of those things that you can get help with, at least from an editing standpoint. And then we get into writing. There are tools out there to help with writing. Make sure it's branded um, within the tone that you want. And something called Grammarly is a tool I use for editing. Even writers are using this more and more. And what that does is allows you to edit it because it's hard to edit your own stuff, but also the paid version helps with plagiarism, especially when it comes to the AI world. This is probably going to be a very important tool. And then mock-ups, things like this, if you're selling products, especially if you're doing an online um, if you're selling mugs, Printful or Print On Demand, it's a great place to um, just quickly and easily put it in. Canva is another tool that you can create mock-ups. And then that's content. We can go on forever on the content, but that is the high level of creating content. Just remember that it has to be through your funnel, supports your channels, and helps you builds and works towards um, your marketing goals. So it all starts to work up. Now let's get into track your performance. Same funnel. Now traffic leads sales. You're going to see this consistently. What are we going to track in traffic? It's new users, demographics, location. Leads might be people to your visitors, scroll depth. This is all very focused on just the website, but this you will want to do for all your channels is make sure you have all those metrics in place. 
and make sure you track them because the truth is in the patterns. You're going to want to see it. And you're going to go, oh, how come I've lost my followers? Or what's this? So don't get too caught up in the immediate, even though you should keep eyes on it. Track it across the months and then look at those metrics and go, what was I doing in business? What was happening in the world at the time? What was competition doing? And that's going to help you pivot as you need it. And then you can get all this information, as I mentioned. Google Analytics is one of the key ones. So websites, your hub, that should be the most important metrics that you track. But then also the key performance indicators are all what's on your social. It's email campaign reports, SEO reports, Google AdWord reports. All of those are information too and track it all in one place so that you can see how it all relates every month. Google Analytics, if you haven't updated it to GA4, um, if you are Google Analytics people, make sure you do it. Um, it's expiring in July, the regular Google. So analytics.google.com is where you can learn a little bit more about this updated version. It's quite different, so keep your eyes on that one. And that's it. That is it in, this, in a nutshell. Analytics, all the way back up to your business plan. These are the seven steps that are going to help you get there um, to success, right? Like that was a lot of information. And I do want to just do a quick mention before we go to Q&A, which we do have time. I'm so excited. I'm going to be diving deep into each of these steps um, coming up in this year and then once a month. Um, these are this is the quick schedule if you're interested let me know the QR code is there or you can contact me directly to ask me a little bit more in details and that way and you will have all the information because it is a lot um, that has to be covered in just one session but I hope it gives you an idea and overview and this is what Emily and I do it's free if anyone wants to just come and hang out with us on Wednesdays um, we have sections we have topics and we have group discussions and again this is where you take these seven steps you build out your plan but you have to constantly be learning you know this morning was about user generated content we talked about LinkedIn all of these little se sec sessions are virtual and free for anyone to join and it's just a chance to engage with us but also to engage with each other because we do grow together and that's it and this is how you guys can get in touch with us okay any questions let us know Okay, Emily, drop questions in the chat if you guys have it. It was a lot to cover. Seven steps, I tend to spend a lot of time at the beginning because having that foundation, that planning, the brand strategy sets you up for success, right? Like that's the foundation of your home. And then we go out and we start to do all of that, um, building out the channels, um, which, and then from the channels, if you can't have channel, channels without content, right? So then we have to think about content, then we have to think about engagement. Um, and we do get caught up sometimes in those individual, like, how do I create a reel? What do I do for, you know, Instagram? It's like, well, we have to always make sure we step back and take those seven steps into consideration and then dive into um, the specifics. So we throw it out to the audience. If you guys have questions, let us know or you want to go back and revisit anything. We have another 15 minutes, which is rare. I usually talk right to the end. So questions. Now I have to find our question board here. Do you see any M? Um, just if the presentation is going to be available. Yes, yes. And the presentation itself too, because there was tips on those on those slides that I ran through and there's no way we could have read them all. And that's good. And there's resource links too. So just know too, our website has a bunch of resources as well and, and blogs and, and we're always available for a discovery call if you have more questions, which is, is no charge to you guys. Um, and some of the things, if there was something on there that you want to learn more about, email marketing, I'd be curious um, what tactics you guys are working on currently. And um, if you have any specific 
challenges with that because I know for us, so many, one of the biggest things is just making sure we consistently get out content. Here we are marketing people and sometimes we get challenged with that. But if we didn't have, and I'll, and this is a little plug for Asana, any of you Asana users, <laughs> nothing that we get out of this, but we love using Asana and for Emily and I and our clients, it keeps us organized. It sends us reminders and it lets us visually see where things are. And so having something like that, a tool in place, as well as dedicated time to work on your marketing can really help with delivering consistent content. And I know on Asana is, offers a way to visually see the content. You can drop it in. So you can go, okay, here's the four posts. This is the visuals that I'm gonna see across the board. So you can actually plan it out ahead of time. Um, that is a tool for managing your content. There's also a capability to create an editorial calendar. So you can actually see it in calendar view, which is really cool. Um, and then there's other tools. So if you have questions about tools too um, and want to know about that, let us know because Emily uses a few when it comes to social media scheduling. Oh, I use a whole bunch and I've tested a whole lot more. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, yes, we have. Um, okay, we do have a question about, oh, drop shipping. Ah, uh, wow, that's a Big question about dropshipping. So if someone was looking to start a dropshipping business, which strategies would you recommend using going forward? First thing I would do, Emily, can you drop in our webinar link? We did with Idea Mississauga last year, we did an online, how to start an online business. Um, hosted by the city of Mississauga and uh, Emily and I were able to do that and it is recorded and that is available. I think there's a handout too and it talks through the beginning and we do highlight a bit about drop shipping. That's just a really big question. So if, do your research, please do your research um, before you get started. Um, I did work through with a client who was considering drop shipping and had the opportunity to go through stuff at the very end, he decided he didn't want to do it because of his research and realized there was a lot more than what sometimes you see on face value to it. So he was not ready to do the work behind drop shipping. That piece of it, I would say for sure. So check out that webinar, um, do your research when it comes to the tools you need. Shopify is one place um, that you can start looking, then they talk about drop shipping because you have to figure out the whole system, right? How it's gonna work. And are you gonna manage the quality control? Because you don't, you are out of the mix, right? You're basically just promoting it. And so is where you're pulling it from gonna be able to drop the product in the way um, to give your customer the right experience? And can you manage your brand around that? because it will be a reflection of you if they can't. So really think through that. And then also I will say one thing, um, start small. Don't do um, a general store concept right away. One product, it's much easier to do it from a marketing standpoint, easier to manage and figure it out. Create a store and maybe that small store with one product and then sell it. Right, like, and then move on, but start small, always start small and build from there. So that would be um, hopefully an answer to that. Uh, oh, here's a good question. I'll read that out. If many of your clientele follows you on your personal Instagram, is it better to keep your content on your personal page? Or is it better to distinguish a business page? They worry about not uh, that they may not follow to a new business page, but want to separate my personal. Oh, this we see a lot. I'll start, but Emily, you're definitely the one. We, we've had this with musicians too, um, as well as other people that start as a gig, right? Like this is little, but it's like now I want it as a real business. Totally get it. Definitely separate them. Part of the reason is, is you don't have to be friends with all of these people, right? They just have to like your page. It also keeps your personal life personal. And so do a bit of a pushover strategy in the fact that you want to just promote them and let your family and friends and everyone on there going, hey, I've got a new page and start to just let them know. I'm, as of this date, I'm not going to be posting on business stuff, maybe periodically, but then you move them all over to your business page and you start 
pushing out there. You may lose a few people, but it's really important because you're going to get quality people over on your page. And then you are an influencer of your page, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn and whatever that might be. There may be times you share your page's information with your personal audience, but then you get to think about if that's the right audience. Did I miss anything, Em? I think you basically covered it. Yeah, like Laura said, this is a question that we get asked. I would oh. say almost every single webinar that we do, even if it's not related to social media, um, because it's it's such it's such a common it's such a common question, and um, it it really is finding that balance. Um, I am personally big on separating myself because I want to have a personal account where you know I can post pictures of you know my hiking trips and and stuff that I and I keep that page private to the people that I'm actually friends with that's just my part of my life that I want to keep separate I also have on top of you know our acorn studio business page I have an influencer page and that's where I post thought leadership about myself, um, you know, about the services that I specifically offer. But it also gives me a way to, like, connect with people in the professional world that, you know, I might not want to bring into my personal life. So if you have, if you have, like, already started growing your personal um, page kind of, like, as a business page, think about, you know, is this, do you want to have the opportunity to share some of your personal stuff? Do you want to like keep that separate? Maybe you continue with what you're doing, but then you create a second page that you do make personal and you only, you know, invite people to follow you that, you know, you want to keep in that friendship family group. Um, I'm just, I'm a huge advocate of having separate ones, but it really does depend on your strategy. Um, and if you want to act as an influencer, act as an influencer. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, it's finding that right balance. It's the right balance and it's time to manage it too. Yeah. Um, but just from a Facebook, just that specific Facebook, Facebook is for friends. It's different when it's your personal LinkedIn, which is professional. It, it's, it's quite often somewhere where you want to keep that safe place for friends and family. Um, however, we do also know some people that leverage it in the real estate world that's their core page and that's really the only reason they're on it so your strategy comes down to your strategy and who's there um, someone did ask about um, a shipping recommend any suppliers for shipping products regarding drop shipping i can't actually make recommendations on that i i don't know from experience i know if you go through shopify there are links to giving you examples of different drop shipping companies. So you'll have to do your research um, on that one because they're all different and they provide different products, right? Any other questions? I know uh, social and that influencer piece is always a, a big thing. But influencers are one of those things that until you, like you mentioned, Em, right, we have to get your own content in place um, before we actually start to, to build out other and bring in other people. So it goes back to figuring out who you are and what you want to do. Your brand strategy piece is really, really important before you move forward with any of it. And if you are really currently working in a business, just go back and do a bit of um, an audit on your whole process, right? Just revisit that business, your vision, values, and then do some research. Sometimes we perceive ourselves to be different than other people. So uh, do that research, go into asking your clients what they think. Are you doing things? Does this match with how my product and services is being offered? Maybe you think you're offering this to someone else and someone goes, yeah, I'm not really relating to that, but what about this? So do constantly be doing research from your business planning, brand strategy, website is key. Go in and do it. If you do have a website, do an audit. Um, Emily and I use Uber Suggest that uh, it's not expensive. You can go in and run it. AREFs, Moz Pro, things like that. You can sign up for a free account as well. I think they give you a free trial. And that way you can run your website and see if there's any issues. Things like um, broken links. Um, make sure your meta descriptions are all up there. That's really important because search is, is essential, 
right, for your product-based business, for any business. And then you want to make sure that you have all of those signals out there. So if you if you don't have your products on your social channel, do you have your products on Google? All of those things are part of those signals coming back. So make sure your branding from when they land on it, they totally understand who you are. It's easy for them to follow through, to purchase. Make sure you test your shopping carts if that's there. If you are a retailer, make sure that you've actually figured out your offline as well as your online strategy and pull it all together. Websites, the hub, and then all of your social media um, as well as that's out there um, is all optimized and branded and email marketing, right? So if we don't have any more questions about that, we could probably. probably we didn't miss anything did we mm. uh, global to local yes that's a global to local or is it local to global uh, I'm a big fan of starting local first I mean if you can Typically, and this is only typically unless you are coming originally from another country and you're more comfortable with a international country, but start in your own backyard, right? You can actually get some local signals from being on certain directories. You know that market. You can physically go and talk to people. If you're product-based, it's much easier to go and do a demo to actually go and meet retailers if you're going to do that. Like all of those things can happen locally. So think locally, but always maybe have that as part of your business plan, that long-term strategy, because it's easier to create these cookie, this, this format, seven step program, figuring out what works. And then you go to another market and then you have to research that market. And then you go, is it the same audience? Do I have to worry about, um, 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 internet um, local signals from there if you're going to different countries what social media are they using there's countries that Facebook is like the big platform of choice and you're going yeah well here it's Instagram so you really do have to understand that and the nuances and the trends of the culture as well so start here and then replicate and then move out but always think of your overall brand strategy right and you may have to tweak it but there never should be a, a um, a big drastic change in your branding and that's where I say step one that branding piece that strategy make sure you stay true to who you are it doesn't matter what country you're in and then start local and then replicate but research it do one one thing well and then research the other one and then move into that market that's typically the way it goes from even a marketing standpoint but also a business standpoint and we see that as entrepreneurs too it's like oh look new opportunity right the next shiny object and off we go but every time you want to expand and do something, it's like a new business. Same with this, it's a new marketing plan. You have to start it out. So big brand vision, start local, figure out what works, take that same structure, and then go and do your research in the other local markets. I hope that helped. Um, yeah. Let me know about that. That's kind of a big, broad question as well. Um, any places where people are stuck, where they're, we have five more minutes, those burning questions of, you know, how come this is not working and how do I get those results, right? Uh, you might have to retype that last question. I'm not sure I can decipher what that means. Oh. To minimize risk as most new businesses fail in the first three years. Well, the biggest thing is um, do your homework. Do your research is one of the biggest things before you even start. Most people don't. Now, I don't mean to do your research, create this giant plan, and be frozen and afraid to start. But you have to do that business plan aspect first. Make sure you know who you are, what you're selling. Um, and your financials is a really big one and your return on investment and then go out and get started. Now, when it comes to digital marketing, the risk factor, I know it's, it's not answering that big question, but 
it's that's the entrepreneur question if you have more entrepreneur startup questions please reach out to the team at idea mississauga they have a great consulting group that can help you with those specific questions when it comes to marketing and reducing risk really follow these seven steps if you hit all these seven steps it sets you up for success it's usually when we skip over or we miss and we have a gap in one of those. We don't do our content or we didn't think through our brand strategy or we haven't been tracking success to know what's even working. That's usually when we start to notice things aren't working. So I hope that uh, helps. Um, yeah, 